This workshop is all about force vectors, so you may want to go over the part of the intro video to workshop 2 about adding vectors. The first section is about free body diagrams. For these, you need to draw all forces acting on a body as arrows. Then the net, or sum force, can be found by adding the vectors head to tail. A shortcut is, you can take horizontal and vertical forces separately because they're independent. You'll be using Newton's three laws in this workshop. The first law deals with the case where the net force is zero. In that case, a stationary object stays stationary and a moving object stays at constant velocity. We call this being in a state of equilibrium. The second law is usually shown as an equation. It's one you'll be using a lot. You can see that the first law is actually a special case of the second, where there's no net force and therefore no acceleration. The third law says that every time a force acts, there must be an equal reaction force acting on some other object. The first question in the workshop is about two objects pushed by the same force. The thing to remember is that when, when you have any system of objects that are connected by strings or by touching against each other, they must have the same acceleration. That can be found by using Newton's second law with the masses added to find the total mass of the system. You'll need to know about friction force for the last few questions. There are two types of friction, static friction and kinetic or moving friction. Both of them depend on N, the reaction force to the force of the object pushing into the surface. Static friction always acts in the opposite direction to the applied force and ranges in size from zero up to a maximum of mu s times n, where mu s is the coefficient of static friction. If the applied force is bigger than the maximum possible friction for that case, the object will move and kinetic friction applies. Typically, the kinetic friction coefficient is less than the static friction coefficient. The final question involves a block on a slope, so you'll need to use vectors in two dimensions. Rather than horizontal and vertical, the dimensions you're interested in are up and down the slope, being the direction the block could move, and into and out of the slope, which will be the direction of the normal force. I hope this gives you some ideas about how to solve these problems.